Good day. My name is Teresa Fredericks from Growing Businesses Using Projects, bringing you yet another video, this time on the project dashboard. My intent with this and every video is to ensure that the ordinary person can understand what is being taught and apply it. The agenda, we are going to be looking at the plan, do, check, act cycle, which is part of monitoring and control. And the project dashboard is used in monitoring and control. We're going to be making the Gantt chart manually, setting up the dashboard and populating the dashboard. The PDCA cycle reminds the project team to define what is to be measured during the planning phase. It also reminds the team that this approach is cyclical, not done just once. So that we start with planning, we develop the plan, obtain stakeholder commitment, define the measures we we'll use in monitoring and control. That has to be done in planning. The do part of it, we are deploying the plan, we are starting the project, and we are beginning monitoring. So let's look at check. We have to organize the data, create displays, analyze the results. This is where the dashboard comes in because we have to put on the dashboard those things that are significant and important for our audience. And the app part of it, we are going to decide if control actions are or are not required. We're going to review options, select the best options, implement, update documentation. Always remember to update documentation. And the cycle continues. So just as how when you're managing projects, you use initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and controlling, closing. When you are monitoring and controlling, you use the PDCA cycle. So what is the dashboard? It's just simply a blank sheet on which you place information that is important for your audience. For instance, there's a chart here. I can double click and change the information, change the name of the chart, and I can cut and paste that on. A table that could be cut and pasted onto the dashboard. There's a timeline that could be cut and pasted into the dashboard. You can, for instance, look at that. I have done it here. I've put the table and I've put the timeline. It is useful to have risk issues, miss deadlines. So that could be part that could be part of the dashboard in terms of being one of the focal points. And then we can also have a summary of performance information for the period. We can have that on the dashboard. So let's get into Excel. Now this is I was just showing you how to set it up in PowerPoint, but let's get into Excel. Okay, we are in Excel and I've created this gun chart manually. What I did, I found this, I headed it up. You can look at one of my previous videos and you will see how to get the calendar there. And then I chose the Saturday and Sundays and I just blocked it. And I went into fill and I filled it with a color. To explain it, for instance, if the 30th of November was a holiday, um, I would have gone, take, blocked it, gone into fill, and I would probably use a color that differentiates from the Saturday and Sunday. This is exactly how I did it. So I got the Saturdays and Sundays blocked. Let me just reveal that. And then, for instance, this Friday is one day, but it is finished to start. All right. So, okay, let me just go to the first. The first task is three days. So I block three days. The second task is four days. It would start and when the first task finish, go for two days and then Saturday and Sunday is non working. So it will go to two days after. And this is how I got the Gantt chart. This is not a dynamic Gantt chart, but many of my videos show you how to do a dynamic Gantt chart. So now we are going to actually make the chart dashboard. So you have the Gantt chart as being one of the sheets, information sheet, just have basic information on the project in terms of the start date, there are no holidays, weekends are Saturdays and Sundays, there's no work on these days, the budget is 36 to 447. Now we had created the Gantt chart 
And what I'm going to do, I am going to hide these two columns because I don't want them in our dashboard. So I'm going to just block them and hide them. I have created a border around the, the gun shot. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the snipping tool and I'm going to make a copy. And then I'm going to copy. I make a made a picture and I'm copying the picture and I'm going into the project dashboard. And this is the first thing I'm going to be putting in the dashboard, the gun shot. I'm going to make it a little smaller by holding it at the edges. So we have our first thing populating the dashboard. Now I have a data sheet. The data sheet and what I did, I went into the gun shot. Remember, let us, if we unhide here, you will see the columns come back in. And what I did, I inserted a column for resources. I inserted a column for budget and actual. And I made a data sheet. So this is the data sheet you're looking at. It has actual expenditure, budgeted expenditure. It has the resources, the persons, and it has the percentage complete. I'm going to do something with the percentage complete column. I'm going to color code it by going blocking it, going into conditional formatting, going into bar charts, and I want a red so that it is very, very visible. No, normally they will put it as a blue, but I just like how it looks as a red. And what I can do, I can do the same thing I did for the gun shots, get and make a new picture. And this is going to be another one of the documents that I'm going to be putting on the dashboard. So I'm going to put it here as a table. I can make it smaller if I want to fit many things in. All right. Now, normally I can put a heading. I didn't, but I could put a heading for, for, for it. So let's go back to the data sheet. And what I want to do. I want a copy of this data sheet because I want to do other things with it. So anytime you want to copy a sheet, you just, you go to move or copy. You make sure you create a copy so that you don't lose the original copy and you put move to the end or wherever you want it to be. Um, I want this to be at the end, so I'll put move to the end. So I'm going to the, the second data sheet that I have created and I'm going to do some pivot tables. All right, so I'm going to go into insert pivot table. Um, they're going to ask me about the range and they have automatically chosen this because this is already formatted as a table. I am going to click, I want it in a new worksheet. So I have the range here and I'm going to click OK. And what comes up here is the pivot table. What I want in this, in this, one, I want the budget in values. I want the actual expenditure in values. I want the resources in the rows. And you realize I already now have another table that I can just do the same. I have those two things there. I am now going to put a third table here. This is going into my project dashboard. And I'm going to go back into the data sheet and I am also going to do another pivot table using the same thing yes I want it on a new worksheet again and this time I want I want the task in the rows and I want the budgeted an actual expenditure in the column in under values and I'm going into project table analyze and what the, the the type of pivot table I really want is a line a line table and here is it and you are actually seeing expenditure according to lines I can make it expenditure according to the person I'm going to copy that and I'm going to get back into this dashboard and I'm going to paste it on so so far we have several several shots 
and you can go back into my PowerPoint and you will get information in terms of you should have risk and issue, um, issues and anything that is important to report you can have a summary you can have an area where you just summarize it in a few words what's happening okay so this basically is a very simplistic way of making a dashboard if you like my content give it a thumbs up and please subscribe